15, roughly. And we're out planting beans. If you watched the uh, the previous video about the hay making, yeah, we've gone a long stretch without rain. And I figured planting wouldn't, the seed wouldn't come up anyways. So we did hay. Uh, this ground has been worked for over a week now. It's been ready to roll. Uh, but we, uh, well, made a little bit of hay. We also have a uh, wheat silage still to chop. That's going to be extra mature. Uh, we're dealing with that. Uh, but we're getting planting done, and then we're going to get all the beans planted until we got to chop, and then we're going to, you know, be forced to deal with that predicament. But for right now, we're just enjoying uh, these long-ish, long for us, straight rows here. Mostly they're straight. We've got one field that we planted the beans this year, Dan planted it yesterday, that he plants it on a curve to get the most long rows. Right? You get uh, you get more plants in a crooked row, right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's plant chaos. And not to say beans don't matter so much, but uh, as long as there's seed out here, you know, the, the grain table gives us lots of flexibility. So I keep looking away, watching the marker. Hopefully you can kind of see that furrow in the, in the soil. We run our marker uh, just inside the tire, mostly because this planter was set up with eight rows. It now has 10. And instead of moving the marker, we just moved our positioning to match the marker. So we're coming to the end. We cross. Hopefully you can see our tire tracks. We've got one right here and one back there. Once this tire crosses, we go ahead and pick it up. Now, keep in mind, I, I don't usually stop so much, but since I'm trying to shoot some footage of this and multitask, we'll slow down. Well, we're gonna drop the marker. And as we're crossing those last three rows, we gotta set the planter down. Give a little bit of fuel and hope our marker mark isn't lined up with the disc furrow. Uh, because my Uncle Jim dissed this field with the way we're planting it on the last pass. Usually my goal on the last pass of disking or whatever is to go at an angle to how we're gonna plant. So that way the marker mark doesn't get mixed up with the furrow. See, we are planting Claremont soybeans. They are from your public university system. Yep. And in the Ohio State Trials the last few years, uh, they finished in the top three across all soybean varieties. So uh, well, they're not Roundup ready. So we have to mix it up for spraying. We, we usually don't use Roundup anyway.
might as well see the tractor while we're here instead of just my ugly mug. Plant with a 10. Pretty standard. Uh, always use a 10. For beans, pretty much. Use a 2 plus 2 last year. And uh, for anybody who forgot about how we plant 10 rows, got three, four, and three with a tire track and a tire track. Now each row is about 18 inches apart and I've got a 24 inch tire track. Now we do the tire tracks because we figure when we spray, you know, we're only spraying, I don't know, like 36 feet. So we go down every other planter pass and we use our tire tracks we make so we don't run over any beans. Because the, from the get-go, if there's a gap, the beans will fill the gap. Not that we can see the tire track very well, but the beans will fill this gap from the beginning better than they will halfway through the growing season when we spray, because all of a sudden there's more space. They're not ready for that. But if they know there is a gap from the beginning, you know, they will adjust accordingly. So we don't run over beans that way. And it makes it real nice when you're harvesting because typically the corn head, or the, not the corn head, the grain table, you can sneak the edge of the head down a tire track and not worry about pushing over any beans. Don't have to worry about getting your divider in there and having troubles. We'll leave a nice little bit of space. Uh, so that's kind of part of the reason uh, for the road tracks. I mean, it would be nice to see a solid stand, but it is rather nice not to run over too many beans when we're spraying. Uh, it's dusty. It's dry. The old 295 road units are still doing good. That's one thing I gotta find. If anybody uh, is an IH group on Facebook, I made a I made a post the other day trying to find the drive chain for these little guys. The pitch matches number 40. However, the chain is narrower. Uh, and in the dealer description, it's called a 190. Well, in standard chain numbering, that should be gigantic chain. Something that's, uh, the, the pitch would be over an inch. I mean, they'd be real heavy duty, big stuff. Uh, so the, we found a couple dealers that have the chain. They're here and there and everywhere. They have all have one or two chains. So luckily we have a bunch of extra units that we can Frankenstein for parts. And we got rolling that way. Um, got a few acres left of this field. I'm going to need seed soon. Brad should be bringing that. Does anybody have any questions about public varieties? These are Claremonts, named after the ugly Claremont soil type here in southwest Ohio. It grows, grows crawdads well, and hopefully these beans, because that's what it's named after. Um, Claremont soil is flat flat and then flatter than a pancake to such it holds water extremely well you know it would uh, it's a soil that does well in drought conditions because it holds water the beans yeah. were bred for terrible soil conditions which we have and it like beans are going on going with untreated seed uh, we've done treated we've done untreated just uh, happened to be able to get the untreated quick and ready to roll this year here comes the seed chariot. Yeehaw. Last little bit of seed to get us through this field. Yeah, we're getting low. Getting down well into the cone portion here. 